<laughs> YouTube, Brian Phillips, look at this SU27 Twin 50. We're doing this right now. 2200 4S all the way back. We started on 3200 4S and we almost crashed and burned. We didn't, but we probably should have. So we're gonna start right now, so stay tuned. All right, so the wind was kind of running that way. You can see from the wind socks, so here goes nothing. Hopefully that grasshopper doesn't jump into the path of the plane because it's pretty <laughs> small. I'm gonna deploy takeoff flaps. Yes, we have flap rounds on here. Here we go. AS3X and safe equipped. Oh, way better, guys, way better. Out of the takeoff flaps. Oh yeah, you can see immediately we already have up. Guys, that's 50% throttle on 4S. Definitely don't need near as much trim as I thought I needed. So much lighter on its feet, so much better. Decent roll authority. The AS3X is tuned in, that 2X definitely helped a lot too. We're right at our 50% point, that's like where we wanna start planes. Oh, well, that's dangerous maneuver, I shouldn't have done that, but you know what, pilots learn from their mistakes by crashing. Let's see if the yaw works. There is surprisingly a little bit of yaw output from that wheel. We don't actually have any clear plastic on it yet, but we were thinking we might do it. Oh, that looks sweet up against the trees too. And we're gonna roll it over and I'm gonna go and take off flaps. Whoa, buddy. Will it get it some speed and get it flying, baby. Whoa, we almost lost it. So cool, guys. This twin 50 is, you would think it's a powerhouse but it's just enough to get the job done, folks. Twin 50s can be battery chewers. This is our free warning for you. We haven't had it yet. Okay, take off flaps, landing flaps. Let's see how it does. Oh boy, a little bit of yaw. Oh yeah, get that thing flying. X-Fly, you did a good job on this plane, but it's definitely a little bit more challenging to fly than what we had from the TA-7, which was the Boeing trainer. Super cool that our rudder is still working. And yes, I am actually feeling like I need to untrim a little bit on the elevator. Let's show them safe. Here, safe. Oh yeah. A little bit of nose up attitude, not a big deal. Guys, safe is really working good. Look at this. Not even looking. That's good. Now, admittedly, 30, 40% throttle into the wind. Let's do just a, a roll here. That's about 50% roll. A little bit more power. We're gonna go into the power on the downwind turn. You don't wanna lose it out from under yourself. Let's see if we can actually bring it around. Yeah, I don't know if I trust safe for the landing just quite yet. Let's try safe with flap runs. 50% throttle, takeoff flaps going in right now. Remember, you're gonna lose some of your roll authority and there's full landing flaps with safe. Yes, safe is doing all the work right now. I am literally just watching like you are. Pretty awesome. Seems to be working pretty good, slows it down a lot. That's a 50% throttle. Sounds good. Okay, into the takeoff flaps, giving it time to respond, getting into the elevator just a little bit. We're 14 seconds from timer expiration, so we are gonna land. Okay. Okay, here we go. We good? Mm-hmm. Full landing flaps in, just relaxing. <laughs> Grass ops again, guys. Okay, I squat that thing down. That was definitely an exciting flight. Now, why was that so exciting? It didn't look like it was that exciting to us. Well, here's why it was exciting. Because sometimes planes fly really easy. And other times, planes need you to manage them a lot. Okay, don't fly that plane on 3200 for us. Because it will deaden the sticks, it, even all the way back in the pocket. I had no elevator authority. Look at this, by the time I was done flying that, I have just a couple of clicks of trim in there. It's at minus 20. So if you figure on all the way, all the way down is like minus 100. Yeah, so we were minus 20. And to, to be honest, we probably could have started neutrally now. So a couple things to consider. 2200 4S, name of the game. Maybe 2700 4S. I don't like to recommend weird sizes because I know that a lot of people don't have them. We happen to have one 2700 4S and we almost never use it. But we have it charged and it's a little bit tempting to fly it just to see how our voltages are doing. Now, we have, a AR, we have an AR631 that's inside and you'll see in the unbox build radio setup, we put it upside down and inside 
over the steering servo. So if you guys are curious how to set this thing up, as with many EDF jets, you're gonna have to be creative or watch our video to figure out where to put your receiver. We use the AR631 because we wanted AS3X and safe, and we got good results on flight, I think. Also, we split our ailerons, so we have flaperons. Flaperons, uh, I wanna say they worked good. I didn't feel like I lost roll authority when deployed. I think that the plane behaves well with landing flaps, as in landing flaperons. I didn't feel like I couldn't roll it, but you know what's really nice when you have flaperons, camera crew? What? A rudder. Mm. You wanna know why? Because you lose a lot of your roll Last authority. However, and this is a big however, when you have flaperons fully deployed and at 150% down too, they are barn doors. And guess what happens when you give a lot of yaw authority? Guess what happens? Hmm. You fall out <laughs> and crash. Mm -hmm. Because you slip out from under, you slip out from under yourself. Uh, something that anybody who's, who's, who's done the, the, the Viper jet knows exactly what I'm talking about on base leg. You'll be coming in nice and slow and that thing will fly super slow, but you'll slip out from under itself. This thing didn't feel like that because I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the control authority to flip it out from under itself. Now, that doesn't mean the plane won't do it. And by the way, thank you for trimming my grass airplane. Yes. Look how sweet it did the grass hops. <laughs> I thought that was pretty impressive, really. It was, and it looks like we lost the tip of our, uh, uh, the tip of our thing. Mm -hmm. So not surprisingly, I love the way the, the flaperons make the plane look, to be honest. I think it's ultra realistic like that. I actually love the way this plane flies on the smaller pack. It was way, way too heavy on 3200 for us. It just flew, Blech. So we're gonna show you that next. But if you guys decide to buy this plane, this MiG-27, or excuse me, this SU-27, it is a great option in terms of, I'm gonna say this right now. If you want this plane, I want you to think of it as a belly lander. Now, why do I say that? Because these landing gear, are actually pretty good. They look scale, they're beautiful, but nobody likes flying a jet with fixed gear, okay? Let's just be honest. It takes something away from the looks of a high-speed pass on a jet, in my opinion, okay? So it is surprising that I keep coming back for more in terms of, and you may notice that yes, we did fix the nose cone. On our first landing, we were so, um, just heavy in general, not so much that we were tail heavy, we're actually probably about perfect that I had a little bit of wind and it veered me off course. And I'm like, okay, I have three choices. I can commit to a go around, which I was trying to respect my timer, or I can try to get it back over with the rudder that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I know that's not gonna work. And then of course the third option would be to just take it. And I took it. And to be honest with you, it landed great. Except instead of pulling the nose cone off and doing one of these doohickeys, it ripped the tip. So, given the choices, I ripped my tip. So, it wasn't bad. It actually didn't do too bad. Hmm. So, I'm almost thinking that this plane, look where the nose is. <laughs> down. Okay. So, that's why I lean toward wheels up, wheels down on a hard surface. But for you guys, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna do like one of these and you're just gonna come in here like air show style and just catch it like that. I'm kidding, you're not gonna do that. Um, but you do have to have some tall grass to catch this thing. Cause if you come in here on a level attitude and you try to land this thing, you could be breaking something. Cause that nose points down. I hate to break it to you. So I wanna say if you're doing it stock, the flaperons are gonna be Eh, they're gonna be optional if you're going uh, if you're going to land on the ground, okay? With without landing gear, okay? If you're just gonna belly land it. Otherwise, you need the flaperons. You need them. It comes in pretty slow. I feel like this thing's gonna be a tough one to land. And also, I need to mow the grass. Look yes, at that. Apparently so. So, the other thing is, I'm really disappointed to see that we 
we actually took paint off there. That mm -hmm. was a bummer. I don't know how that happened. It could have just been the speed by which we rolled over the edge. And by the way, you may have noticed guys, I was under pretty good control on the way down there. And surprisingly with these big vertical stabs, you know, there are no rudders there, but the thing is it just, it stayed laminar. It stayed like controllable. It's, it's weird actually. Usually when you put big flap rounds on a plane, it just gets really wonky. But I was really impressed with that. I also did notice a little bit of walkiness. Now, that could be atmospheric because if you look at that flag, it is not sitting still, okay? <laughs> it looks calm, but it's not. It's actually been weird and gusty like all weekend, like really gusty. Mm -hmm. So super ha happy that we got to slide in. Obviously the cloudy skies, I didn't feel like it made it look bad, but I'll tell you one other thing that I didn't expect. And that is at this time of night, with the blue backdrop, it definitely was hard to tell between this, this, and this. Mm. And what that does for you is it's very quick to lose orientation. And that's part of the reason why this is classified as an intermediate plane as opposed to like a beginner plane because actually it's not that hard to fly. There's just certain aspects of these camo planes, especially at certain times like what we pick because that's when the wind is calm that they will disappear in the sky. It's so weird. Maybe I need to go to like get my eyes checked because that's two planes in a row where I, I said that eyes matter. But we've also flown in similar conditions to this. No, but that that uh, L65 wasn't, it was like dead calm. It was absolutely gorgeous weather. So I'm gonna take this tape off because it's hurting my soul. Yeah, so even with that broke off, I think it looks good. So yeah. I love the way this plane looks, by the way. I'm super disappointed about that. I'm a little bit disappointed that we can't pull up those landing gear because I think it would look really amazing. But I'm gonna tell you one other thing. I had another, it was SU-30, and that plane lasted several flights. And it went down in a very scary way. And so much so that I've never really looked back. Mm -mm. You know, you and I lost the 7006 s in it. Mm -hmm. And that sucked. I just did two landings on this, relatively easy, sweet looking plane. I know it's on SU-30, but it's SU-27, still similar looking. And it is kind of hard to tell the difference if you're not like Russian, I suppose. I don't, I can't tell the difference. But the thing is, that is one sweet looking plane. It is. And also, I love that it's actually twins, even though they're battery chewers. Let's see how bad it chewed our battery. That didn't chew it at all, actually. And you guys can see here, no receiver. Where's the receiver? <laughs> the receiver is in here. In yep, and you'll see if you watch the Unbox Build Radio setup, which published just a minute or two before this video. So if you guys have noticed that in our format and you like that, give us give us a like. You know, I know it's a different video, but don't forget to like the videos here on Brian Phillips RC. It helps us a lot. I know it's minimal. Uh, you don't have to buy a plane every time we do a video, but if you're gonna buy a plane, definitely check out the links in the video description below. You're gonna help support us with small commissions that we get from the people that send these things for us to review. You're also gonna help to support us in a way that we have strengthened our relationship with the people that send us planes. So what do you think that leads to? More planes to review for you guys at home. Now, the people we work out, the, the people that we work with are partners in the business. They are making money, doing this as a living. We're doing this because we love it and we wanna bring you guys a great RC experience. So the cool thing is the ones we work with will let us tell you what we really think and they'll let us point out things like we damaged the paint here and things like that. Now those are minor issues, but if the thing sucks, we're gonna tell you that. So if we work with people that are actively sending us product they're trying to sell and they say, go ahead and tell people if it sucks, you gotta have some pretty decent high character people you're working with. Okay, so I love the fact that we work with good people that will let us tell you the truth about these foamies and beautiful planes, fixed wing, you know, off-road crawlers, surface vehicles, all the stuff that we work with. And that's so cool. It's free because we get to tell you what we really experienced. Because here at the end of the day at Brian Phillips RC, we're here to support you as the audience and not necessarily the distributors that sell these things. But at the end of the day, we do need product to bring to the show. So it's very important that we have good relationships with these guys. So if you think it's even halfway worth considering and you decide to buy it, buy it from the links. That keeps everybody working for you. So keep that in mind. Now also, I wanted to just let you know, the NX8 
has been phenomenal. It has been great. A lot of people ask me that are newer to the hobby. This is a 50 millimeter EDF that runs on 4S. Beginners are gonna be tempted to do a plane like this. I'm gonna just stop you right now. Mm -hmm. Don't do this one yet. Wait, put it on the laundry list or buy it now and keep it in the box, okay? Here's why you're gonna do that. Because we hate to talk people into the hobby at the wrong entry point. If you get in at the wrong entry point, you're gonna get out at the wrong entry point. Mm -hmm. And you're never gonna come back and you're gonna think, what a jerk, you lied, you said it was easy. No, Yeah. I, I never say stuff's easy unless it's easy. Um, so honestly, this plane's not especially hard to fly, but again, I've got years of experience. I'm not the best pilot, I'm certainly not the worst pilot. I'm somewhere in the middle. And the thing is, I love flying these planes. I love the challenge of flying a tough plane. But I also don't love flying planes that are hard to fly. If they're hard to fly, I don't enjoy it. We do them, we review them, storage. Never see them again. Because I don't want that in my life. I got enough stress in the real world. If I wanted a stressful experience flying a plane, then you know I'd become a pilot. I don't wanna do that crap. I wanna enjoy the experience. This thing was enjoyable, it was fun. But you have to pair that up with the right level of skill. And you can get there too. And I know you're saying, but I'm not good enough, Brian. Yes, you can get there. It just takes time and practice. A little bit of perseverance, a little bit of courage, and yes, some money, because you are going to spend a lot when you're new on glue. Yes. I spent, I spent money on glue on this one. I've been doing this a long time. So that being said, we're here to encourage you if you're a new pilot, and the way we're encouraging you is to say, don't buy this one, but buy another one, and then soon you'll be able to buy this one. Or many other awesome choices, okay? So yes, BitGo, good plane, XFly, good job. We like the engineering on this, it's a good plane. A couple things for XFly if you're listing, which I doubt you are. We want flaperons. Put a Y cable at the end. I don't wanna have to build ends. If I'm a newer pilot, don't make us do that. That's one. Two, we need LEDs. We need LEDs. I know it's not free. I know it costs money to put LEDs on these things. We need them. One, two, three. One, two, three, something like that. We always need nav lights. It makes a huge difference. It saves planes' lives. If it saves even one plane's life, isn't it worth it? And everybody's saying no, but that's okay. I think it's worth it. Plus it looks totally sweet and it's not really that expensive. Please do LEDs. Secondly, we have that battery all the way back there. Good specs. I felt like we had good information to work with. Kudos to you guys on that. I don't like that steerable nose gear. It is hard to put in. I'm not sure if we come up with, it is stout, it does work, but I'm not crazy about it, okay? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are gonna do belly landings with this thing. I also think that people that are doing belly, the CG's marked. <laughs> I did not know that. That is so irritating. No, sorry, no. Um, okay, so I just noticed the CG's marked. That's hilarious. Uh, if you're gonna do belly landings on this plane, you better get the varnish or something out. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need to do something because it's gonna chew through that paint. It's gonna be gone on like the first or second flight, unless you have super tall grass. And yes, our grass is pretty dry. It's been a dry summer for us. It looks like it's gonna rain, but it probably won't. Probably it's just not. gonna tempt us. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of thoughts, folks. We try to give you guys the no BS, Brian Phillips experience on Brian Phillips RC. And that's what we did here today. We hope you enjoyed it. No, we didn't get a greasy, perfect landing. And my apologies for that, maybe in the future. We have second thoughts we usually do, which will happen a couple of weeks from now. So we will be showing that at some point. Definitely check out this plane. If you're an intermediate pilot, if you've got a little bit of skill, definitely X-Fly, the other thing I'm gonna ask for. I think I know why you didn't put rudders on this plane. And I think the reason is if you put rudders on this plane, guess what's gonna happen to this plane? Wait. It's gonna roll. Oh. It's gonna induce roll and it's gonna do a minimal yaw impact. So it's just gonna crash planes. Mm. So. In my opinion, as a pilot, I always, prefer, I always prefer to have a more realistic flight experience, even if it's realistically challenging to mix out with mixing on my radio. Mm -hmm. That's my personal preference. Doesn't mean it's the only way to do things. Jeez, that guy's flying. Look at this. He's flying up here. He's like right under the ceiling. Yeah. He's probably trapped. He's probably flying out of the Trying to get clouds. Out of the clouds. Yeah, he's like, well, I'd hope to go another 4,000 feet, but I can't right now. So I gotta fly like 14 miles that way and then I can go up. Um, anyway, so, sorry, Brian Phillips squirrel moment. This plane is cool. It's definitely a good one. It's definitely gonna take a little bit of effort to get set up, but so did the TA7. 
And so does, by the way, every flapper on plane that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. It always takes more effort. I felt like our elevator correction was spot on. I didn't have even a thought. Did we have, do we have any issues with when we deployed flaps? I don't think so. We got lucky. That's yeah. twice in a row, by the way. Yeah. No elevator correction. And yes, the elevator correction was the correct direction. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for those settings. Don't ask in the comments, watch the video, please. Because I can't remember all this stuff. There's too many planes. We have done thousands of videos on YouTube. So if you want to know the answer to what the settings were for the flaps, like literally just watch the radio setup. It is going to be published for you. If you're hearing me say this now, that means that the Unbox Build radio setup is already, already available. Yep. Okay? If you, yeah, if you're at this point of the video, unless you skip forward, even if you did, this was released a minute after. Yep. So <laughs> we know what's going on. All right. So good plane. Awesome. Twin 40s for ESCs. Didn't notice anything crazy on heat. They are warm to the touch right now, and it's been cooling down for many, many minutes because I've been blathering. And I'm almost wondering, camera crew, what do you think? Should we, yeah, we're just gonna immediately follow this video with the flight on uh, 3200 4S. This, yep. uh, which, full disclosure, same day, yeah. 20 minutes apart, wasn't a big difference in conditions, maybe slightly calmer on the second flight, mm -hmm. which is this one. Um, and I did feel like it was a little bit better. The conditions were a little bit better. Mm. The plane flew a lot better on 2200 4S. Yeah. All right, that's it guys. Brian Phillips signing out. Stay tuned, flight's coming next. Don't forget to buy these things from the links below. That's how we fund our channel. Come back for more. You did it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, SU27 Twin 50 from XFly. Super excited to bring you this beautiful bird. It does have fixed landing gear and it's supposed to have ailerons which we do, but we decided we were gonna set it up with flaperons. We've had some variable wind and we are gonna start right now. Stay tuned. All right, here goes nothing. AS3X and safe engaged. Good ground handling. Holy cow. I didn't do any flaps for that takeoff, probably should have. Giving a lot of there's some clicks of trim. Take off flaps now. Oh, that thing looks sweet. Could definitely use a lot more up. We are flying on a little bit bigger pack than what was expected by the manufacturer. Now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if that's part of our problem. Got the gains up just a little bit on one X. Still feel like I'm, listen. Oh, it's a bird. I thought it was my voltage alarm. I thought it was too. Oh yeah. Twin 50s definitely on the verge of making this thing awesomeness. I definitely am gonna tell you something. I think our battery choice was too big. I think it needs a smaller battery. The Twin 50s are gonna do fine on what we picked, which is 3200 4S Smart Pack Gen 1. But one thing I can say is it feels like maybe it's just a little bit riding nose heavy. We should be able to fix most of the behaviors I'm feeling right now by turning up the gains a little bit. I'm surprised how yawy it is for not having a rudder. We do have a steerable nose gear. I just want to see how this sinks down for landing. That's out of the throttle. Okay, into the throttle hard. We definitely needed a little bit of up trim. Like we're all the way out of trim now, but we have a little bit of positive authority again. One minute remaining. Okay, I guess we're gonna try to bring it over the top of the tree line. We've got a little bit of wind with us, full landing flaps here. Obviously this is with flapper on, so we're losing some of our authority. And we're gonna try grass hops for y'all. Okay, all right, throttle cuts on, 40 seconds left on the timer. Didn't feel like we lost a lot of power there, but I'm gonna definitely admit to something. All right, first of all, the flapper ons were great, really did help. I hate it when you break off the nose on Maiden, that's really frustrating. But the thing is, that'll be an easy fix, I can go ahead and Get this glued back on with CA and then just use a singular toothpick and glue that back on with foam to foam. The same thing we used to attach 
the tail. So let's go ahead and camera crew, if you can hold that for me. Let's show you what I did wrong and what you can avoid. We have a 3200 30C in there, definitely feels nose heavy. Now, when I say nose heavy, I mean it feels very stable, but the elevator feels weak, okay? I'm holding my index finger right above my thumb and it definitely is testing, it feels nose heavy. Oh, well, I guess technically we have our nose missing too. And look what it did, it grabbed, extra. <laughs> it grabbed a little extra there. So I'm gonna go ahead and un, undo the flaps. So if you guys are watching our build, our radio setup and build, unbox build radio setup, yes, the one of those things, that's gonna actually be published right before this flight. So hopefully you will see what you need to see. We are definitely gonna try another battery. We're definitely gonna get this filled in uh, with the nose that's right there. I mean, it should be no problem. Yeah. When you have a nose break off like this, it's really, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. You can get that thing glued back on. This is magnetically attached. So I think what happened is the nose just sits pretty low and grass hops were surprisingly good though. Yeah. If you look at that. Now, why did I not yaw to correct? Because you don't have a rudder. There is no rudder. So when you're flying a plane, understand your own limits. And also look where the windsock's going. So what happened? We, we wind vaned off the center of, of, of the runway. Mm -hmm. So not a lot I could have done about it other than get into the throttle hard and do a go around, which honestly that might've been a better choice. But either way, the thing handled okay. It's definitely uh, a nose heavy plane flies too understable. So that means that it's very hard to control because you have like no pitch authority. And look at the elevator. Yeah. So I feel like we had very limited pitch authority and it felt weak on power because we're too heavy. So we're gonna try this again with 2200 4S and see how it does. All right guys, so real quick, we're just gonna show you what we're doing here to fix this. Oh, I suppose I should take the cap all the way off. So this is just how easy this is. You see, I've got a pretty good amount of that on there. Now, why a lot on this and less on the surfaces? Because this is a nose cone and it's not critical in terms of structure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get that on there with the glue and let it spread around a little bit, okay? Then once that's spread around, you just wanna let that tack up and let that chemically react, okay? And then that's gonna give us our tackiness, which is gonna allow it to stick. And then I wanna talk to you about the battery real quick while this tacks up and then this will amazingly fix like with hardly any effort so we'll just leave this right here okay so while that tacks up let's look at the battery our battery is all the way back okay gen one was nice for this this is so thick like so tall that it was kind of almost hard to fit so i'm kind of glad the 2200 4s is going to end up being a better size for this plane we did good on voltage though 3.89, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's good. What was our timer set to, five minutes? And we so, respected the timer, actually. I think it at three. Oh, yeah, three minutes. Yeah. Also, the whole build long, we were worried about hitting the tail, and we didn't need to be worried about hitting the tail because it hits the EDFs, not the tail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go to 2200 4S, and we're gonna see if this 50C is charged. So if you have one of these little voltage alarms, it works really nice. So it looks like this one is not charged, not enough. It's in perfect storage mode. So what we're gonna do is we'll use a Gen 2. And the only drawback to the Gen 2 in this case is that this Gen 2 happens to be chewed up pretty bad, as in it's been used a lot. And also it is a Gen 2, so there's no way to plug in the voltage alarm. But that's gonna simplify our lives. So we did our shelf liner trick, which you guys will see in the unbox build radio setup, but as you can see, I wanna get this thing tail heavy as I can get it with a smaller battery, which means when you do that on an EDF, that means sometimes you gotta really work to get that battery back. That strap, not gonna, it's not gonna do us any good at all. Now this wire, this little loom, comes from the receiver, which is in here, which you guys will see if you stick around for the unbox build radio setup. But what I want is I want that battery all the way back I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And yes, we're doing all this live and in person and we are losing daylight. This is now two days after our build, right? Or one day after our build. One day. So whenever you're a couple of days into a build, for me, I start getting antsy. I'm like, I really wanna get it done. You gotta let it set. 
Okay, let the AS3X initiate. That's been sitting plenty long. Now, the glue's not gonna pop out, and this thing, it's so strong you could probably hold the plane. Now, the challenge is, do we glue on the tip like this, or do we stick a toothpick through? And that's a, that's a tough call. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna literally go without the tip on this clip. But I wanna show you guys what it looks like. If you use foam to foam, you can actually glue this sort of thing. It just doesn't work as good as CA. And I wanna see if I've got enough residual on that Q-tip to make it stick. So what I've learned on these little jet noses, this is always the first thing to break. Mm -hmm. So actually what I think I'm gonna do is for the, for the sake of our maiden flight, I'm gonna grab off a small piece of tape and this piece of tape is gonna help me to obscure that damage point. And we're losing light so quick that I'm just gonna basically do this now and then we're gonna go fly and then I'll come back to it after a bit and fix it. So that's just gonna hold it in place. Now, if you look, it's getting real tacky now. So that real tackiness is gonna make that so it like never basically comes off unless we hit it on the ground. And if you hit it on the ground, let's be honest guys, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be broke anyway. Um, okay, so we're just gonna stick this on right now and just spin it until it gets the key point. There it goes. Um, and then obviously we need to tighten this down. We've got a couple other utilities here that we were thinking we might need, but we didn't. So. While you're tightening, can I clarify something you said outside? Yes, yes please. When it's and this is heavy. Yeah, and this is being seen in order, guys. Yes. So you guys will see the Maiden with the 2200 first, but you're gonna see this after the, you know, just right. hitting the nose on the ground. On but that when, it's, when it's really nose heavy, it's actually overstable. It's right? overstable. And, and that means your elevator has less authority than it ought. I, I think outside you, you might have said understable, but I'm not sure Look, I could have. Now it's nose heavy or now it's tail heavy. Tail heavy. And so what that means is I'm gonna have a lot of elevator authority, but also it's lighter. And they did suggest mm -hmm. 2200 to 3000. We just tend to break that rule. My timer's cleared to three minutes again, and I think we're gonna be golden because we're at like 3.96 mm -hmm. on our 4S 3200. So I think our 2200, we should be golden. So guys, hopefully this helps you out in your endeavors. You can also see where we ended up with our trim, or not our trim rather, but our gains. So I think in this case, I'm gonna go probably up, oh, I'm tempted to go up to two times, so I have a little bit more, because it is definitely gonna be more pitchy when I do that. So what I wanna do is, real quick, I'm gonna go down to Ford Programming, let it connect, go into Gyro Settings, AS3X Settings, and I'm gonna go to t times two, and I'm gonna turn this down to the center, which means I'm gonna have more gain, which means when I go really fast and you just back out of list and you're ready to rock. And also every time you, you have a crash or it wasn't even a crash, it was just a grass landing. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right. Y'all left, y'all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my trim out halfway, mm -hmm. okay? So it's at 50 instead of all the way down. So I believe our elevator is gonna be okay now. So stay tuned, hopefully that worked. We're gonna have the Unbox Build and Radio set up next for you. And you've seen all the changes we made. That trim was all the way down. This trim is all the way over, which we explain in the Unbox Build Radio setup because of the mechanism on the steerable nose gear. So we're gonna get back to it before we lose our light. But thanks for watching, guys. So much more on Brian Phillips RC. Buy the plane from the links below. Thanks for watching.